heat pumps. That's what we're going to talk about, how heat pumps work, why they're a great way of heating water, and why they can save you money. I'm going to look at um, the, a little bit about the technical, but also about uh, how they are used um, to reduce the cost of electricity, to heat your water, and the fact that there are government rebates in Victoria available right now to assist um, in keeping those costs down. So just a little bit of background. Um, I run what's known as the Smart Energy Lab here at Mount Tullibuong in Victoria, and uh, that's where I live. You can see a picture from the air there. Um, I have a training facility here, which is where students learn all about renewable energy, uh, solar panels, inverters, batteries, and also heat pumps and other ways of saving money uh, for, by generating your own electricity or your own hot water. It's a pretty cold place, as you can see from this picture, um, frosty morning just a few weeks ago, and uh, at the moment, uh, we're not actually running any courses because of COVID, but normally what happens is um, every month I have a bunch of students turn up who are very keen to learn all about uh, renewable energy, uh, how to install inverters, solar panels, batteries. Um, I don't actually run any plumbing courses, but solar hot water is part of the design concepts. Um, I do introduce how they can be used as part of a renewable energy system. In fact, as I'll get onto later, uh, solar panels work really well when combined with a heat pump. It's a great combination because you're now generating free electricity uh, and using a heat pump to generate free hot water. I also do a bit of testing at my lab. Um, there's about five different buildings which consists of um, uh, testing and training facilities. I've got some uh, indoors and some outdoors and it gives me the opportunity to uh, get to know a lot of the products on the market and how they work. I have got a heat pump in fact here at the lab which is used to heat water for a small cottage out the back. So got practical experience in that area and I used to sell heat pumps actually um, quite some time ago so uh, I'm familiar with uh, what the customers expectations are and uh, how they can be uh, very, very useful. So I guess I should start by saying, um, you know, why do you want solar hot water? Uh, now, <laughs> when I say solar hot water, actually a heat pump, which might just look like an air conditioning unit with a tank, or it might be an all-in-one tank with a big, big unit on the top. How can that be a solar water heater when it's often around the south side of the house? Now I'm going to go into the bit more of the technical uh, in a moment, but basically um, it's a way of transforming low-grade energy, uh, low-grade heat, into higher-grade heat. So it's important to understand your motivations. Uh, is your motivation to save money? Uh, so will heat pumps save you money? Definitely. So Victorian government estimates savings of um, over $400 uh, or more per year for customers uh, moving from a resistive element to a heat pump. Um, also, you're using renewable energy, so it's clean energy. It's actually the energy of the sun that's used to heat the air. Even though it might be only 10 degrees outside, that's a whole lot warmer than absolute zero. So there is definitely energy in the air, even if it feels cold to the human body. Now, that energy can be transformed using a small amount of electricity. So we'll look at how that works in a minute too. Also, being able to heat your own water independently. So some systems will work um, if you have uh, energy storage, for instance, say you've got a battery backup system, you can still run a heat pump uh, if your inverter size is, is big enough, uh, even when the grid's not available. So um, independence can be part of the motivation for um, having solar hot water. Now, I should always start off with there are other ways to save money, and we should be frank about this. Uh, some of the cheapest ways are actually free, uh, such as negotiating a cheaper electricity rate with your electricity retailer. Now, there's a thing called the loyalty tax in Australia, and it's particularly strong in Victoria. And what the loyalty tax is, is if you choose um, to 
basically stick with your same provider um, for the whole time that you're uh, buying electricity, that provider won't see you as a loyal customer in the way that you would expect, i.e. reducing your charges or giving you the best deals. They only give the best deals to the new customers. So the new customers get the cheaper price, and really it's, it's kind of like bait to get them to churn or change from one retailer to another. But those special uh, cheap rates expire usually after the first year, and you automatically fall back onto the default rates. Often, just changing your electricity retailer every year, I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it can save you 10 to 20% on your bill. Now, the Victorian government's been um, helpful setting up a facility. Uh, it's known as uh, the uh, Energy Compare, and it's the compare.energy.vic.gov.au website that there's on the screen. So you can use that um, service to find uh, what a better price is. And also, you can haggle. Uh, you, in Victoria, you can actually haggle with your retailers and say, sorry, that's a little bit more than I was expecting to pay. I might go elsewhere. Um, the obvious one, of course, is reduce. Reduce the use of energy on your home or business. Um, that might be simple. It might be just paying attention to um, things that are left on that shouldn't be, so lights that are left on in rooms that are unoccupied. Um, turning stuff off uh, at night time before you go to bed. It could be automated even, so you've got some things that uh, need to run at certain times. Uh, you can automate those, even with plug-in devices, uh, they're pretty easy to automate, just using a, a timer, a sort of a $10 timer that you'd get from a hardware store. So automating, um, uh, t actively choosing to turn stuff off, and by the way, there's invisible power, sometimes called phantom loads or phantom power, that's consumed by appliances that appear to be off. Now, uh, every plug pack that or every device these days that runs off USB comes with a plug pack and that plug pack uh, actually will still be consuming some energy even when that device isn't plugged in. So good way to test this is if it's warm it's using energy. So turning things off at the wall as opposed to just unplugging um, your phone and leaving the plug pack connected. Also larger entertainment consoles can often have quite a bit of standby load as well. Uh, because you've got a DVD player and a, um, uh, maybe a hard disk recorder and a TV and a set-top box and all these things jammed into the corner somewhere uh, and they've all got lights on, they're actually consuming power. And another one which is uh, a little bit irksome is the fact that your internet router uh, often is left on 24 hours a day because you kind of think you need it all the time and it's using a continuous amount of power, often 10 to 20 watts. So sometimes it's a matter of just being selective about what things are left on and uh, or scheduling turning them off. So reducing energy uh, is really a personal choice but it is the cheapest way. Um, it's sometimes referred to as uh, nano megawatts, the, the watts you never needed, the negative watts, uh, they are actually the, the, the cheapest watts of all. Another obvious one is using energy efficient appliances. Now uh, you might wonder how you're going to choose which appliances are energy efficient. Um, that's what the star rating scheme is for. Now it's not a scam, it's actually mandated under the mandatory energy performance scheme uh, for some decades now that all appliances are rated and that's a independent rating system uh, that gives a star rating based on performance. It used to be known as a five star system. We've added more stars uh, lately and also a crest as well for some really high performing appliances. And so when you are choosing an appliance, often choosing the highest star rating, even though it's more expensive, will actually save you money. Uh, so the total cost of ownership is the purchase price, price plus the cost of running it. And so if you can reduce that energy consumption over time, it will save you money. The last one on my little list here is um, solar panels and heat pumps. Now I put them together, they don't have to be together. You may already have solar panels or you may not. Uh, you're thinking of ways of heating water, you're choosing a heat pump, but by combining these two, as I said at the uh, beginning, you're actually going to get the benefit of uh, having free electricity to run your super efficient water heating system. So they're a great combination, uh, heat pumps and um, solar panels.
So it's going to look at uh, solar hot water rebate here in Victoria. Um, at the moment, the scheme's still open for solar hot water systems. Uh, government schemes come and go, so always check the website before you make the choice. Uh, at the moment, you're getting $1,000 um, towards the cost of a solar hot water system. But there are some eligibility criteria that you need to meet. Those criteria, um, it's a bit of a fine print here, but I'll just kind of read through it a little bit for you. Uh, you need to be in Victoria, so it's only available to Victorians. There are other schemes in other states, if you happen to be watching this from another state. Uh, you must be the owner-occupier of, occupier of the property. Uh, the owners have a combined um, household taxable income of less than 180000 per annum, and that's based on the Australian Tax Office notice. Uh, it is an existing property valued at under $3 million. The hot water system to be replaced is at least three years old from the date of purchase. And they have not received a solar PV rebate, that PV meaning solar panel rebate, or a battery rebate under the Solar Homes Program. Now you may have received a rebate under a different program, that's fine, but the Solar Homes Program, which has been running for some years now, a Victorian program, uh, you only sort of get one bite of the cherry. So uh, if you've already received um, the solar PV rebate or the battery rebate, you're not eligible for the solar hot water one. I should point out there are still federal rebates for solar PV and very generous ones still. Um, so under that scheme, the small scale renewable energy scheme, you can also still get rebates for solar panels under the federal scheme and get um, solar hot water rebate here in Victoria. The property is not a new build. So this is a retrofit rebate. It's not for new built homes and the solar uh, or a solar hot water system or the heat pump hot water system is on the solar homes program of approved products. So the Victorian government is trying to make sure that only quality products are being offered under this program and uh, meet all the compliance requirements. Now there is a little um, final dot point on their list there, it's a little bit techy, but properties that are connected to reticulated natural gas without solar PV greater than two and a half kilowatts can only install a gas boosted solar hot water system. So um, there's a kind of a, a little bit of an edge case uh, if you've already got solar installed, whether you'll be able to get the uh, solar hot water rebate. So that eligibility criteria, it's all done on the web um, in consultation with your uh, supplier and they'll no doubt help you. So now we're gonna get a little bit technical. Um, the, the um, uh, requirements for a heat pump to work are that it's got a source of energy. Now the the energy that your solar hot water heat pumps use is uh, the energy in the air. Now it's amazing isn't it? The air even on a cold day in Victoria where it might be 10 degrees or less still has energy and as I jokingly started off today uh, talking about uh, the fact that it's a whole lot warmer than absolute zero 10 degrees Celsius um, that means there's energy in that air. So a heat pump actually is an energy transfer device. It takes low grade thermal energy and makes it into a higher temperature, you could say higher grade thermal energy. And it does that using a small amount of electrical energy. And it does, that electrical energy is used to run a compressor, exactly the same system as used in your refrigerator or your reverse cycle air conditioner. So by compressing uh, some, some liquid which has got some energy in it, um, it will heat up. So as you compress that liquid, it'll get hot, or it's a refrigerant to be exact, um, and that heat in that refrigerant uh, will be then transferred to the um, heating system. Now in the case of hot water service, it'll be a coil wrapped around the tank that will heat the tank and heat the water within it. And then that cycle repeats. It will then um, lose that heat, it'll be on the cool side of the expansion valve, goes into the evaporator, turns back, um, is evaporated back in, and, uh, and turns into a gas, and then that gas absorbs energy from the air and is compressed again. So the ratio of the electrical energy that you input compared to the thermal output, the heat energy, is known as the coefficient of performance, often called COP for short. And the coefficients of a pro coefficient of performance is kind of a measure of how good your heat pump is and how effective it is uh, at heating water uh, using the least amount of electricity. 
So that's um, just a really um, a quick intro on how heat pumps work. But I should point out um, there are many ways of reducing electricity using solar energy. Uh, and this is a picture of my home where I live at Mount Tulibuong uh, here uh, on a community. And uh, we've got uh, PV water heating. We've got solar thermal water heating. So we've got evacuated tubes as well. Um, we also have solar power. Uh, and we use some of that solar power to divert into a hot water tank as well. So I've actually got a ridiculous amount of systems uh, because I test them uh, on my home. But uh, it just shows you there are many options for heating water uh, and saving money. So that's it. Um, where I live is on a community called Murumura Cooperative Community. We've been here 46 years without mains power. We have hot showers, the lights come on. Uh, it's pretty ordinary really and it's all off-grid. Thanks.